I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Version 2.0 of my flight controller is out. I would like to introduce it to you and tell you the things that we made just a little bit better compared to previous versions. Well, in one case, we made something a lot better. And introducing my ESC. Yep, I've been working on an ESC this whole time. Uh, not like I've personally been back there with a soldering iron working on it, but anyway, I got an ESC too. Let's take a look. Let's start with the flight controller. The layout of the flight controller is the same intuitive, easy to use layout that we've had before, but we noticed, especially with the increasing uh, popularity of Crossfire and the increasing popularity of GPS, even on Acro Quads, how about that? That a lot of people were feeling the lack of UARTs on the JBF4. On the JBF4 V2.0, we've got the T6 and R6, that's UART 6, transmit and receive, both broken out. So that's one full UART that you've got. And we've got the T4 and R4, transmit and receive for UART 4. So that is two full UARTs that you have access to, in addition to uh, the smart port and the S-Bus pads, which of course, if you're using FreeSky, then you're gonna have these UARTs available for anything else. If you're using Crossfire, then you're gonna use either R6 and T6 or T4 and R4, and you'll have one full UART available for other functions. We've also put the RX4 pads at the corners. If you're using ESC telemetry, you can, if you have individual ESCs, of course, then you have an easy place to wire ESC telemetry. And of course, in order to do that, we did get rid of the ground pad, which some people are going to object to not having a separate signal ground, but especially when the flight controller has the PDB built in like this, I'm not convinced there's as much of an advantage. And if you really want to run a signal ground wire, you can run it to the ESC minus pad, the same as your power. One of the biggest changes we've made in version 2.0 of the JBF4 is to improve the reliability and robustness of the nine volt regulator. In version 1.2 of the board, that was two revisions ago, there were a ton of failures and we went back in and we examined the problems that were causing that and we improved things slightly in the version 1.3 so that there were hardly any failures we've gone even further and redesigned the 9 volt regulator to be even more robust in version 2.0 so if you had problems with the 9 volt regulator on the jbf4 in the past well first of all i'm sorry that, that was a big screw up and we think that this one is as rock solid as you can get this little guy here is one of the most exciting parts of the JBF4 V2.0 to me. This is a trim pot that's used by the factory to calibrate the current sensor. See, I, a lot of times with a flight controller, you have to go through a tedious manual process of calibrating the current sensor. And even after you've done it, you're still not 100% sure it's right. So I said, can't we just get the factory to do this for us? And they said, sure. Yeah, absolutely. And they did. So this has been calibrated and adjusted. So your current sensor should read correctly right out of the box. And don't worry, it's got a little dab of glue on there to keep it from moving after the fact. So it won't come out of calibration. And that's a really nice touch, I think. So why doesn't everybody do that? I don't know. You'll also notice here that there are two shunt resistors for the current sensor. What's happened here is that the scale of the current sensor has been doubled basically. The old current sensor went to 130 uh, amps maximum and if you exceeded 130 amps you just your values wouldn't be read correctly. Now we thought well gosh how many people are exceeding 130 amps and some people said uh, I am so we've doubled it. So now you get up to something like 250, 260 amps. It's over 200 amps and basically this means that you should never exceed the top end of the current sensor we probably melt the PDB before you exceed the top end of the current sensor. Now, some people have also rightly said, doesn't that reduce the precision of the of the of a current sensor? And that is actually true. When you double the scale, you have the precision. But if you actually work the math, you'll see that we're still down at fractions of an amp precision. So it's still way more precise than you're ever going to need and it gives you more scale. In the previous version of my flight controller, we added a plug for everybody using 4-in-1 ESCs so you could plug it right into the ESC. But in the previous version, that plug could only do analog current sensing. It didn't have a pin for ESC telemetry. Uh, this one can take ESC telemetry and the way it works is that you've got a solder bridge here 
and this solder bridge is used to select either ESC telemetry or current sensing. Now, the layout that you're seeing here, I complained about this placement because this silk screen here is a little misleading. The silk screen here is labeling the pins. This is the V pin, the current sense pin, etc. But this solder bridge it looks like the silk screen is labeling the solder bridge and I thought that was a little misleading. So in future versions of the board, we've actually moved this solder bridge over to here. I'll show you a picture of it. Uh, but basically you solder, use this solder bridge to select the function of the C pin. The C pin can either be analog current sense or ESC telemetry, depending on the position of this solder bridge. And that brings us to the Joshua Bardwell Race Day Quads 4-in-1 ESC. Uh, it's BL Heli 32 ESC, rated for 30 amps continuous, D Shot 1200 support, current sensing, ESC telemetry. Oh, and it's 50 bucks. So, uh, what more do you really want? <laughs> we have been pounding the Dickens out of this ESC for the last several months, me and the testers at Race Day Quads. Yes, running it at 6S, 1900 high, higher KV motors, and it has taken everything we've thrown at it. We know that one of the most important uh, things about a 4-in-1 ESC is that it be reliable because if you smoke one you've smoked all four and you're out your money so we've done our best to make sure that this is as reliable as it possibly can be and we hope that you'll agree now some of you are gonna look at this and say that looks awfully similar to an Airbot Typhoon ESC is this just did you just slap your name on a Typhoon and the answer to that is no if you actually put this side to side with a Typhoon, it is actually, it's got different uh, component layout, different traces, different design. Uh, and in fact, but even if it was just a slap in my name on a Typhoon, Typhoon is 60 bucks, mine's 50 bucks. So uh, if all I did was slap my name on it and save you 10 bucks, I still feel like I did your service. But no, this is not just a rebadge of a Typhoon. However, it was designed and manufactured by Airbot. So there are some similarities to the Typhoon. Like I said, they're, they're similar. Mine's 10 bucks cheaper. So uh, buy mine. <laughs> now, the next thing you guys are going to ask is, well, how do you wire these up? And for my flight controller, there is a detailed manual that I myself wrote. You can download it from the Race Day Quads product page. If you order from Race Day Quads, you can even pay them a couple extra bucks to print it and send you a printed copy if that's what you're into, Grandpa. But hooking the two of them together couldn't be simpler. The ESC comes with a plug, naturally. And... It couldn't be simpler. Oh, there we go. See, it couldn't be simpler. I'm having problems getting the plug to go in, but... And they just plug together. And then you'll need to use the solder bridge here to select ESC telemetry. That's what this, this guy outputs, ESC telemetry, not analog current sensing. The other thing you probably want to know that this ESC doesn't do is it doesn't have a 5-volt regulator built in. So if you're using a flight controller that requires 5 volts input, this may not be the ESC for you, but most flight controllers nowadays can take VBAT input, and so we thought it probably wasn't worth uh, adding the additional expense and the additional space on the board to put a 5-volt regulator on there. So there you go. That is the JBF4 V2.0 flight controller and the JB 4-in-1 ESC. And I got to tell you guys, when, I, when they came to me and said, you want to work with us on a flight controller, over a year ago, I was like, yes, I can think of the, all the things that I could do right about a flight controller that other people are doing wrong. When they came to me and said, you want to make an ESC, I was like, I don't know, ESCs, what do you, what do you, they're just, it's just, you just build an ESC, right? But I got it for, for a price of 50 bucks and for all the features that you get with this ESC, I'm very happy to be able to bring something this feature rich, this reliable and robust. Uh, and I'm, I'm really proud to have my name on it. So go check it out. You can buy them individually or you can buy them together in a kit from Race Day Quads. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Happy flying. <sighs> Here's something that's changed over the years. It used to be that these were pre-installed at the factory. And I guess all the Chinese people just got tired of pushing them in. This is a huge pain in the ass, I confess getting these things in people say they're the wrong size no they're just supposed to be like this it's a pain it's a huge pain in the ass I fully agree what seems to work the best is you kind of get that up there and just kind of push from the rear and squeeze it in 
and it will go. There we go, just like that. See, it's it's a pain in the ass. I know, I, I agree, but that's that's how you do it. Thank you.